My name is Stephen Langford, and I'm the director of education at Syncardia Systems. In the 80s, the concept of heart transplantation really became a viable medical reality. This is a very specialized technology, and the demand is really due to the fact that there are more and more people suffering from heart disease. From the time I was little, all I wanted to do was play baseball. I would play every day after school, and my mom had noticed my chest go up and down, up and down, and she'd ask me, are you okay, are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine, why do you keep asking me that? It was that summer between sixth and seventh grade that I was diagnosed with rheumatic fever. And so they had to go and replace my aortic and my mitral valves in my heart. Basically, after that, I led a pretty normal life. Married the most beautiful woman in the world. We have three kids, and then one day I felt like my symptoms were coming back. My kidneys were shutting down. My liver was shutting down. My lungs were full of fluid. My body was basically dying around me. The doctor came in and said, well, your heart is done. He said, we're gonna cut out your heart and we're gonna stick a machine in there. And I thought, no, thank you. I looked at my wife and I said, I don't know, what do we do? And she said, we're doing it. And I said, okay, we're doing it. That was June 20th, 2013. That was the day I received the artificial heart. In the recovery room, there was a profound sense of loss that I was feeling. I felt empty. I felt like if I don't have a heart, am I really a person? There was no other way to save his life. He had to really fight for everything he had. Without that artificial heart, he wouldn't have survived. Once the patient becomes clinically stable, the patients move to the portable freedom driver, which is only 13 and a half pounds. They go home to a new lifestyle away from the hospital. The patients are going to be in multiple types of environments, whether it be a cold day or a hot day. We need to make sure that the air coming into the system is always uniform and pure. That's where we worked with the UAF to put the filter in the system to uh, clean and purify the air so that we have the right air to pump the artificial heart. Thermal management is the way that we keep our device either cool or warm. Ultimately, we're trying to maintain a specific temperature. UAF is a strong collaborator. They originally collaborated with us on the first Freedom Driver and helped us develop that. And it's important that we continue to have that collaboration. Because he had the artificial heart, he was able to work out. He was ready for the heart transplant and he excelled at his recovery. 10 months after my transplant, I completed the Oro Valley Sprint Triathlon. I've done a total of six triathlons since. Most importantly, I've been able to be a father to my two daughters and my son. All those things that I missed for so many years with my kids, I get to be a part of that now. I remember the first hike we went on where we actually were hiking with his new heart and we just looked at each other and like, can you believe it? Do you remember? This is what we wanted to do and we're doing it. I can't believe it. I literally was on death's door and because of Syncardia and because of this artificial heart, I'm still here four years after my transplant now. Without our device, our patients would not be here today. UAF and Syncardia's mission clearly is to save lives.